of our communities are pleading for help. All our houses were flooded up to the gallery when it's all had its livelihoods lost. What, what do you say, really? It's uh, heartbreaking. And as the cleanup gets underway and opens isolated coastal settlements, the body of the missing firefighter is found in Moody White. Jeez. Oh, man. It feels a bit daft to be uploading a video about me building a deck. I started doing this before the storm hit. Um, if, if you want to help out, I'll, I'll look into ways where you can do that, and then if I find them, I'll put them in the description below. Specs, decking screws. I always use these decking screws. So the thread at the top locks into the decking and then pulls it into the joist. And it has a T25 bit. The screw is a small head, so when you skew it, it doesn't look crazy and out of place. And what I do find interesting is that it's cylindrical and it's not tapered. Okay. Let's go around here. There are very important things to consider when building a deck around a house. And one of the things that I always prefer to do, if I can, if I can make it happen, is make the structure of the deck completely independent of the house. Another way of doing things is putting a stringer joist on the actual house and bolting it into the foundation. And then that does away with the need for that line of posts. But I don't like to do that. I like to keep it separate from the house. You're just increasing the odds of something going wrong with the house, with the cladding, with the water tightness of your property. So keeping it separate will decrease those odds. So this joist here has got a 12mm gap there. And we do the same with the decking. Which I will show in this exciting episode, but first, I've got a scriber to finish. Must be the good coffee. Speaking of job. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Speaking of jobs under the deck. We have to patch the hole that we made in the foundation in order to do the foundation for the beam. So another factor that might affect our deck building this week is there's currently a cyclone hitting the country. There's gonna be a direct hit up in Auckland and we might get a little bit of the fringe rain seems to be coming over the hills that are behind us. Um, hopefully nothing too dramatic. There is a wind warning. So I'm glad I'm building a deck rather than a roof. Another important thing to do before you put the decking down is to have something other than just nails to connect the frame to the foundation. That wind's picking up. So this just helps the post and the bearer connection so the bearers don't roll off the posts and also a bit of sort of lateral strength as well. But also to complete the system you want the joist to be connected to the bearers in a similar way and that's what these are for. Twisty tyres or cyclone tyres and all of these are stainless steel as well. Partly because of how close the framing is to the ground but mainly because of the treatment that's in the timber, it tends to help corrode the metal fixings. If you want to be precise on that, the, the copper. copper the copper is reacting with the zinc. And speeds up the corrosion of yeah. a galvanized thing because there's zinc in the galvanization. Yeah. Mm. Uh, galvanized versions of these fixings is a lot cheaper. That's what you typically use inside the house because yeah. the framing that we use inside the house doesn't have the copper, copper chrome arsenic. It's treated differently. But outside, it has to have that to survive the elements. Hmm. 
Ray's handiwork there. I see you even did the speckled plaster look. Yeah, man. God, you don't muck around, eh? <laughs> Abstract. Yeah. Very well done. Smash and dab. So it's still drizzling a bit. It forecasted rain all day long, so we called it off. But it's not as bad as it said it was gonna be, so. The worst weather is up north. Up in Auckland where I used to live, it's like a full cyclone. But I think we can get some stuff done here. So the decking that I'm using is called Vitex. And Vitex is a tropical hardwood. And as is often the case with tropical hardwoods, they don't have long lengths. And I only have two that are three and a half meters. Most of the long ones are three meters long. But three and a half meters will get me from the end of the deck to the corner of the house. So I cut the first one wrong. See, I cut the board nicely, but there is way too big. When it goes past the house, great. Nice up there, but there, way too big. I got my measurement wrong. The measurement that I took from this line to the windowsill, I ended up measuring from this side to there and cutting that way rather than from this side to there. It was really the only board that was long enough to do this. See it goes past the corner of the house. This one here, this is um, one of the other long boards. It's not long enough. And then the other board that is long enough is damaged. Got this big scrape on it. And a crack and stuff, that's not too bad. But then if I flipped it over to avoid the scrape, it's got this sort of stain on it. It could be as simple as a water stain, in which case that's not too bad. But if it's an oil stain, you're always going to see it. Not too bad, look! That's the sanded area, and that's the stained area. So obviously a deck is going to going to get wet but that must have got wet and didn't have the opportunity to dry. Ah, there's another imperfection. Oh, look at all this. You can't really see it but all the ends being shaved thinner. Ah, this isn't good enough is it? All right, I might have to have a join. Okay, we're in. Specs, decking screws, holding it down. We've got the gap around. And it goes all the way past there, ready for a mitre. This one, we're gonna add a little bit on there. There's gonna be joins all over this deck, let's be honest. All these boards are short. Speaking of boards, let's jump to tomorrow.
tell you what kind of guy I am to work with. Not only do you get to use some of the exciting tools that I've been given for free, occasionally I'll make you a coffee as well. Coffee? Yeah! Your case caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, What's, why, why do you ask? Well, we are balancing on your, uh, on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get one full length on that's fixed and nice and straight. And then with that on, well, I'll show you what we do next. Typically when we lay decking, we don't screw off every board as we go. We just get enough screws in it to keep it in place. But for this establishment board, this first straight board, well, we're gonna be putting a bit of pressure on it. So I've got all the fixings on to keep it dead straight so we don't move it with all the other boards. And we're also oiling the ends. The end grain is the most susceptible to water. And once it soaks up water and then dries out, that's what leads to cracking on the end. Alright, now with the first board on, we do the magic method that I'm going to call the Pido method. Because he's the person who taught me it. Basically you add up, in this case I'll do five boards, plus the gaps, so 135, times five plus six times three. We're doing three mil gaps. 693. Ready? Yeah. Okay, now here's the fun part. With all these wedges, we evenly space the gaps. So if you go back to episode one of Scott Brown Carpentry, that's exactly what it was about. Routering the ends. Only difference now, we add a bit of oil on the ends. pinged our new line which is parallel to the string line that we had here when we first set out the deck and that string line is square to the deck going that way now all of that is great for when we do the border because we need to do mitres and if the mitres are 45 it's going to be a lot more straightforward so put this establishing line on drop all the pieces in wedge them and it's easy as that I was wondering what Ray was doing. He was cutting some metal with, with a grinder. And then he comes over with this little contraption. Pop that there. Put your pencil in there. I'll hold it. And then there's your position of your screw. See? Skadoosh. <laughs> Bit of Dutch ingenuity. Mm. So if you one second per screw, what do you got? How many screws do we About have? About 1800. 1800 seconds you win there. <laughs> You'll be on the couch or behind your PlayStation with no time. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we can actually walk in 
in and out without falling. <laughs> what, a meter? <laughs> Should we open the other door up? This is so exciting. It's the small things, eh? It really is. It really is. Obviously you've got a lot more decking to build. Look, we've got the stairs to build. It's a big deck, isn't it? Oh yeah. We'll put lots of plants around it. In fact, actually, if anyone has suggestions of what we should plant, definitely hydrangeas, but that's sort of as far as we've got. Doesn't all have to be perennials, it could be annuals too. What do you think? Kitchen there, dining room table will be there. Lounge will slowly push this way. Yeah, it's exciting. Actually, this is the first time really where I've been able to imagine how we're gonna live in it. It's cool, it's really cool. Mm. Right now it's got a bit of a, I don't know, rustic, deconstructed vibe. I don't know what you mean. Vibe. What are you talking about? Last night after we watched the news about the horrible flooding and cyclone up in the North Island, we had a earthquake down here in the South Island. It's kind of at the top of the South Island and it just felt like someone grabbed their house and just shook it, right? For about four seconds. Yeah, we're fine mm. and the house is fine, but it was like just another reminder of everything that's going on especially for people in the north island it's been really upsetting to see everything that's happened cyclone flooding no earthquake it reminds us of the floods we had last winter and how supportive everyone was so we've donated to two organizations auckland city mission and a company called honest wolf they make bags but they've set up a fund for rural communities we'll link them below if you want to help out mm. yeah but it's been just another reminder that we should be prepared for these things. They're happening more and more. We're going to do a little audit of our emergency cupboard. I mean, we feel thankful that we're in a community that's okay and that we can contribute somehow to um, helping those that are not okay. Mm. Um, yeah. So if you can as well, like Jess said, the description in the... <laughs> like Jess said, the link is in the description below. See you in the next exciting episode. See you in the next exciting episode. Of, look at this extension of the living space. Woo! Woo! Oh, I should not jog like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boo, you alright? I'm fine. <laughs>